So the new buzzword in the air that we have also heard here in the conference is bioconvergence. Aaron Allen has alluded to that earlier in the conference. Can you share with us why this has been one of the key strategies of the Israel Innovation Authority this year? So yes, thank you for this question. It is a new strategy for us. And the reason is that Israel wants, you know, we are a very successful ICT sector. And we want to have diversity in our successful industry. So healthcare is obviously an obvious suspect, and we've been extremely successful in medical device side. I think, as, uh, as uh, Marius mentioned, digital health is a very strong growing sector. And bioconvergence is the name we gave for future medicine. We called it future health tech. And the future medicine, we believe, is not going to be just personalized medicine, which it obviously has to be, but it would also have to be medicine that brings the right treatment to the right place in the body at the right time. And that requires convergence of technology. That requires not just AI, but also nanomaterials, of which Israel has a very strong, uh, very strong uh, academic research. And, and uh, we're beginning to see how it translates into industry and how it starts to translate into healthcare. And including the imaging and including the medical device and drug delivery. So bioconvergence is a name we gave to this new medicine that's coming up, maybe not next year. As you said, some of those projects sound futuristic. If you think of uh, nanobots traveling somewhere in your body, monitoring and, and delivering medicine when and where it's needed, that sounds a little futuristic, but actually projects are funded and already being developed. Just mentioned yesterday, a company like NanoRetina that's been around for probably over 15 years that creates a chip that replaces the damaged retina. It integrates with the, with the tissue and becomes part of the body. That company is actually close to clinical stage. So there are quite a lot of examples. The research has been in, in engineering biology or biological engineering, you can come at it both ways. It's been around for 15 years, and we feel it's becoming ready to be turned into actual industry. And we feel that Israel is a perfect place. We are a very multidisciplinary multi culture. We have very close relationship. It's probably one place where biologists and engineers and data scientists meet for dinner every Friday in our yeah. families. That's where a lot of Israeli innovation happens. So we think this is also a place where such companies can grow and build a very successful industrial sector for the future. Sorry for long answer. So the convergence of engineering and biology you think will bring to the next leap in healthcare. And Tammy, you have been recently in senior global position in pharmaceutical company at Abvi, actually, Abvi Biopharmaceutical. And you were right there in that position. So from, from your perspective, what would it take, and there are additional representatives here, affili Israeli affiliates of uh, multinational pharma companies, what would it take for them to recognize this opportunity here in Israel as an opportunity to take the next step? So as a first statement, uh, I think pharma companies do understand that Israel is a place of innovation. Mm -hmm. And I think the challenge is not the uh, uh, reputation or awareness. Mm -hmm. I think it's more, um, it's, it has more aspects. So if I uh, will focus on three main aspects. The first one is we need to understand uh, that the value what happens to the value chain of, of the pharma companies. It's really disrupted and changed. We need to understand what pharma companies are doing about it, and then what is the role of the Israeli affiliate to change the, 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 and make Israel as a place to look for innovation. So if I look at the first, um, on the first uh, subject, that the value chain of pharma. If we look at the value chain of pharma that everybody knows, that is discovery, and then R&D, which is a clinical trial, and then there is this supply chain, marketing and sales and patient, 
in every part of the change we see a destruction. And uh, if I will take, I, I can talk for hours <laughs> about every part of the chain, but if we take an example of the R&D or clinical trials. Uh, in the 90s, pharma was the leader in doing clinical trials, right? And uh, the leader in submitting files to the FDA and bringing new molecules. If we look at the three, last three years, we, have, we see a lot of, of molecules submitted to the FDA, which is a much larger number than in the 90s, where pharma was leading that. If we look really closely to the numbers, we'll see that only 25% of the products that are submitted to the FDA are really originated by pharma companies, by the big pharma companies. And the ones that are really getting to the, um, to really submitting the file are only 47% was by small companies. And when I say small companies, are companies that their R&D is less than $200 million. If you compare it to the big pharma, you see that the numbers are really, really different, right? So innovation is not in the big pharma anymore. They are not leading that anymore. It's led by small biotech companies. And this is a place where pharma already sees the difference. Uh, and I can go on with the chain, but I will not do that right now. So the other question is what pharma is doing about it. So if we look at it, they are, they are not doing a lot. If they look at how they operate, they operate like they operated 10 years ago. They see the trends and they understand the trends. They know what's going on, but still they are operating the same. The only place that they already see that they lost is the clinical trials. So this is a place that when, when they understand that they, they lost it, Israel can take a place on, on, on that part. And that brings me to the, my last point, that what is the role of the affiliates in Israel? So usually you have a lot of, um, of visit here, but usually it's the commercial people and not the clinical people. And if, if even the, co the clinical people are coming, that's not the innovation people that are really doing the change in the clinical trial. So the problem, real problem is that in clinical trials, Pharma sees a need and will look in Israel to find solution for clinical trials. This part is easy sell. So in this part, you can really uh, do it quickly. In the marketing and the patients that we have a lot of startups that are working on patient engagement that is also good for clinical trials, but it's in the commercial side or on access. On access, pharma companies do not see the need right now. Mm -hmm. They are already, they, are, they still believe that first in class products will give them access. So in this point, it's, it's a harder sell, but the affiliates can change that too, according to the market need. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, Nathalie, you are um, at, as was said, at one of the top 10 uh, hospitals in, Israel, in the world. Uh, you have identified from your uh, uh, position at the cutting edge of innovation, you have identified additional advantages of Israel as a place to advance healthcare and, and opportunities. Can you elaborate? Yes, of course. So Israel has many advantages in that frame. So I'm, I'm in charge of the big data and artificial intelligence. Uh, first of all is the amount of data, as was mentioned here before. Uh, Israel has electronic, I mean, most of the healthcare organizations in Israel have electronic medical records for 20 years. Uh, coming from Boston, I can tell you that we went live on uh, electronic uh, records in 2017. Um, so this is, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2007. Uh, so it's definitely a huge advantage for Israel, uh, the amount of data, the fact that we can actually trace every person because we all use the same ID number, something, something is, that is also unique for Israel. Uh, but also all the startup companies, as was mentioned here. So we have uh, only in the healthcare world, uh, I think about 2,000 startup companies in Israel, and I would say that 600 are in digital health, uh, which is a very big number. Uh, so that's in global the big advantage. Uh, the, the advantages that are per the healthcare organizations themselves as they act here and um, create workflows in comparison to the US, uh, there's also a lot of advantages. I think that we are quite agile, we are more open, uh, more flexible with what we can um, 
permit on doing with healthcare data. Uh, there are regulations, of course, but we can definitely uh, make processes quite quick. And just for example, um, when I was a medical director in Boston, it took me two years to pass one IRB for one technology. And since I came to Israel, I had about 17 different wow. IRBs yeah. for different technologies. It doesn't mean that we don't follow regulations. It just means that people are much more, uh, probably hungrier and more curious uh, to try to uh, new things, definitely in such a conservative uh, world like healthcare. Yeah, that is remarkable. Mm -hmm. um, Marius, you have opened our discussion here, and our time is almost up. So we can get another closing remark from each of you. But uh, would you like to reflect on, uh, on the discussion we had? And also, any additional things that people in the audience should know in order how to better understand how you can take advantage of this big opportunity? So, uh, thank you for the opportunity again. And uh, I believe that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Israel can bring some very unique and fascinating disruptive technologies to the American market and really cut costs. Uh, the cost of healthcare in the U.S. is uh, breaking any standard, uh, uh, and we, we can really help uh, cut costs, and at the same time uh, invent new uh, jobs, new businesses in, in the U.S. that are new, instead of, for example, having uh, physicians that were trained for, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years looking at uh, radiology images, at x-ray images, we can use their brain power and their talent and expertise to do other things that are more productive than something that a computer can do very, very easily. Thank you. Anya? I just want to say something personal here. I feel so privileged to be in the room with two huge visionaries in the future of healthcare. Marius is one of them, and Sami Segal sitting in the audience since the other. And we just need so many more visionaries like you guys. Thank you for being here and advancing the health tech. Thank you. Um, as I said, I think the Israeli uh, innovation is really known by pharma. I think pharma needs to... Uh, that once pharma will move on, Israel will be one of the top countries that they will look at. So if, if I represent the hospitals or the healthcare organizations, I feel that it's def we're get, definitely going through a huge change and a, and a big uh, revolution, as we said before. Uh, we are just at the beginning of that. Data uh, that was accumulated so far, not in, in the purpose for analytics, we'll still use it. It's not so easy to use it, but we'll still do it. But we we'll definitely create more resources of data Knowing how to use this data in order for us to change the way we deliver healthcare, I think that that's the key. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to redesign the way we deliver healthcare because the population is getting much older, carry much more chronic diseases, and we have much more resources of data. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>